welcome back to my channel. My name is Poppy Makhele for those who are new to the channel and today we are talking about contraception. This is an important topic to me because if you guys remember in my first video I mentioned that I have an interest in Ops and Gyni and a part of Gyni that really resonates with me is women's health. I have personal experience with contraception which I will be sharing throughout the video as well as professional and if you think this is a video that you will benefit from please stay tuned don't forget to like and comment and if you are new to the channel please subscribe one of the reasons why i started this youtube channel was because i wanted to make health information more accessible to people in a format that they understood i mean you have youtubers that will teach you how to cut your crease how to style your skinny jeans how to edit your Instagram pictures, it would be nice if you had someone who would help you make educated health decisions. And that girl is me. I'm that girl for you. Before we start this very important video, I want to emphasize three important points. Number one, contraception is a personal decision. It is done for you and you only, not your boyfriend, your partner, husband, not your mother, not your family. It is a personal choice. Number two, the appropriate contraception is decided upon by a woman in a consultation with a healthcare professional. So it is important for you guys to go to your local GP or a trusted clinic and that's where you will decide which contraception is appropriate for you based on your needs and your health. And number three, always 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 exercise dual protection that means using a condom with whichever contraception you've decided to use i feel like i just said terms and conditions apply. <laughs> anyways now that we got the t's and c's out of the way let's get into the video all right so i want to start off with anatomy because i do understand not everyone studied biology in high school and the anatomy I'm so sorry guys I live right by the road so if you hear motorcycles and trucks apologies this is something that I cannot control where were we I want to start this video with biology because I understand that um, not everyone studied biology in high school and the biology is important because it will help us understand how the contraception works as well as side effects. So let's start with the basic female anatomy. So you have the ovaries, then the fallopian tubes, the uterus, the mouth of the uterus, which is also known as the cervix as well as the vaginal canal. Um, the sperm will swim up the vaginal canal through the cervix into the uterus, also known as the womb, into the fallopian tube where it will find an egg and fertilize the egg. The fertilized egg will then move down into the uterus and attach itself to the lining called the endometrial lining. And there it will grow Forming your bundle of joy. <laughs> ah, so yes, that's how basically conception happens. Pregnancy happens. Um, and what is contraception? Contraception is an artificial way of preventing pregnancy. There's more to contraception than just that, but for the purpose of this video, that basic definition will suffice. There are two categories um, that we can divide contraception into. Number one is hormonal and the other one is non-hormonal. So in the hormonal section, there are two hormones involved, estrogen and progestin. <sighs> I'm in hell, guys. <laughs> estrogen and progestin. Progestin is a synthetic hormone of progesterone, which is what we have in our body. How do estrogen and progestin work? 
So with progestin, there's two mechanisms, um, two ways. I'll try not to be very medical. There are two ways. Number one is that it thins the endometrial lining. Um, and before I explain the significance of the endometrial lining, it's the lining where the fertilized egg attaches itself, basically forms a support structure, which is the placenta um, or the afterbirth. And that's where it gets its nutrients and everything that it needs to grow. Then, um, if the endometrial lining is thinned, that can't happen, preventing pregnancy. The second one is that it thickens the mucus around the cervix, which is the mouth of the womb. That prevents the sperm from entering the uterus. And if it can't enter the uterus, it can't get to the egg, it can't fertilize it, no pregnancy, point blank, period. <laughs> <laughs> the city girls are within us, child. <laughs> um, yes, moving along to estrogen. Estrogen is a hormone basically that prevents another hormone that's involved in the formation of the egg. So if it prevents that hormone, then no egg is produced, no egg is available to be fertilized, no pregnancy, okay? Oh, the city girls need to leave us. <laughs> I hope you guys understand everything that I've just explained and we can move along to the important juicy parts about types of contraception, pros and cons about the contraception. Under the hormonal category, we have the pull, we have the transdermal patch, we have the subdermal implants, we have the hormonal injectables, and then we have the Mirena. We're going to discuss those five, and then under non-hormonal, we have the copper IUD. The pill. The pill is either a combined oral contraception, which means it includes both of the hormones, or it's a progestin-only pill. I have personal experience with the pill because right through high school, I struggled with acne and I was fine with it. Guys, I had acne and I had braces, but I was okay-ish with it um, until the end of grade 11, beginning of matric and I was like, mm, I will not, I will not have acne at my matric dance i won't i refused so i went to my mom and i asked her to start the pill because i know that it has um non-contraceptive benefits for acne and i've been on the pill ever since i tried to stop but my skin just won't allow me every time i stop i have a flare up so I am still on the pill and I'm trying to figure out when is my skin going to stop acting like a teenager. But until then, c'est la. Alright, so in terms of side effects of the pill, and these are the side effects that you should expect if you're on a hormonal contraception. Things like headaches, dizziness, nausea, um, breast tenderness, and mood changes are the kind of symptoms that you should expect when you are on a hormon hormonal contraception. So let's start with the pros of the combined oral contraception. Pros, it has non-contraceptive benefits. So it will help you with acne, it will help you with dysmenorrhea, which is basically the cramps that you get when you're on your period. It will make it less painful, also make it lighter, and also it will help you with your premenstrual syndrome. A second benefit is that um, your fertility should return three months after stopping the contraception. Cons, you have to remember to take it every single day. No skipping, every single day. Number two is that it interacts with other medications. So if you are taking antibiotics, um, 
ARVs medication or anti-TB medication um, that decreases how effective the pill is. So you need to be aware of this. Number two is that, no, number three, you cannot use it um, in women who are known to have heart disease, who've had a stroke, or who have a history of having a clot in their veins. Um, and then number four, it cannot be used immediately after birth. And now the pros and cons of the progesterone-only pill. So number one is that it can be used immediately after birth. Um, number two is that your fertility should um, return three months after stopping the pill. And then it can be used in women who are more than 35, who are smoking, who have hypertension, and who are obese. The cons is that it causes um, bleeding irregularities. So you'll have spotting here and there. Um, and then also it does interact with other drugs. It is known to be less effective than the combined oral contraception. And also you have to remember to take it every single day. No skipping. So what happens if you do forget to take the pill? What should you do? Because I do know there are girls on this channel who are already on the pill. So let's say you forget one pill. You're supposed to take it at 8 p.m. It's 8 a.m. the next morning. You've realized, mm, I forgot to take the tablet. Um, what you should do is you should take it as soon as you remember. So you wake up, you go to your, your drawer, take out the pill, take it then in there. Um, if you forget two or more, you take the most recent one and then you continue. And then if you have been involved in unprotected sex, you take the emergency contraception. Then you continue with your pill um, 12 hours later. <laughs>to the transdermal patch. So the transdermal patch is a small patch that you apply to your skin and it releases a small amount of hormones on a daily basis through the skin into your bloodstream. The hormone that is involved is progestin. What you do with the transdermal patch is that you apply the patch to your skin and then you change it every week for three weeks and then on the fourth week you go patch free. Um, Pros of that is that you don't have to remember it on a daily basis. It is easy to use and it also helps with your period. It regulates it, it makes it lighter, less painful. And then the cons is that it is visible depending on where you put it and how you're wearing your clothes. And then um, it can cause itchiness and soreness over the skin. And then um, the side effects that we know so the mood changes, the breast tenderness, the nausea, and the dizziness. The next one that we're going to discuss is the subdermal implant. This is also known as the implanon. The implanon is a small matchstick size plastic device that is put underneath your skin. Um, the common one that we have is the, on the, the single rod, which lasts about three years, but you can also get the, the two rods, which last about five years. It contains the hormone progesterone as well, and it releases a small amounts of hormones into your bloodstream on a daily basis. Um, side effects, I have had a lot of patients complain about the implanon. Um, especially focusing on the menstrual irregularities. So it changes your menstrual cycle. You might have a, lot, a little bit of spotting or your period will stop altogether, which is not a bad thing. It is not a bad thing, and then I'll explain that later when we're discussing the hormonal injectables. Right, so the pros is that it is long-term. 
it lasts about three years or about five years. Secondly, it doesn't require regular follow-up. And thirdly, your fertility should re return once you remove it. In terms of cons is that um, it needs to be inserted and removed by a healthcare professional. Number two, there will be complications if it's not inserted or removed properly by a healthcare professional. And then number three is that it does cause, like I said earlier on, some uh, changes in your menstrual bleeding. <laughs>
it does not require regular follow-ups, and your fertility should return um, after removing the device. The cons is that it has to be inserted and removed by a healthcare professional, and it causes a lot of cramps and pains um, upon insertion and afterwards. Like your uterus feels like there is something in here and I am not coping. Um, and that is something that you have to consider with the Mirena. And finally, we have the copper IUD. And as I mentioned in the beginning, it is a non-hormonal based contraception. So the copper IUD is a T-shaped plastic and copper device that is inserted into your uterus. There's no hormones involved with this contraception. How it works is that it prevents sperm migration as well as it changes the, the endometrial environment to make sure that implantation doesn't happen. All right. And pros and cons. Pros is that it's also long acting. So it lasts about um, five years. It has no hormones, which is why I am considering um, the copper IUD because of the non-hormonal basis. And then it doesn't require regular follow-ups or re daily adherence. And your fertility should return as soon as you remove the device. The cons is that it has to be inserted and removed by a healthcare professional. Um, and then also it causes irregular vaginal bleeding as well as cramps and pains, especially during your menstrual period. And that's what you need to consider when considering the copper IUD. For me, the fact that there are no hormones involved, the fact that it's long term, those are the reasons why I am considering the copper IUD. And that is it lovelies. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope it didn't sound too much like a lecture, but I just wanted to give you guys enough information so that we can stimulate thought as to which contraception is best for you. If you have any questions, please comment them down below and I'll try and answer them to the best of my abilities. Don't forget to like and comment. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I'll see you guys in a video that's more lighthearted next time. Thank you. Bye.